Hi, my name's Nina Tarnazer, and welcome to this video for the Florida Watercolor Society. Today, I'm talking about Texas Blue Bonnets and what inspiration we might get from Van Gogh's irises in painting dark, uh, dark flowers across a simplified green background. I was uh, given a commission to do these Texas Blue Bonnets as a full sheet, and today in the demonstration I'll be working on a quarter sheet. And I wanted to talk about my methodology on capturing these organic shapes and lovely color, uh, rather not as a landscape far back or as botanical illustration close in, but as something kind of in a mid view, and how one would get the uh, viewer to move their eye through the painting with uh, so many similar objects in the painting. So let's begin. And before we start the demonstration, I'll let you know I'm a planner. Planners plan by value studies and looking at the colors they're going to use in advance and uh, planning out the drawing masking sometimes in advance. Um, I'm a planner. I like to uh, do whatever I can to ensure or prevent problems as I progress through the painting. I have many friends who love watercolor and don't plan. They are inspirational and take um, their prompts as the watercolor changes on the paper. Uh, There's a very adaptive and flexible approach it really is particularly good for those of you who paint in a loose manner. Uh, I'm more of a cellular painter, so today we're planning and I'm showing you my steps that uh, how to plan a painting and maybe even save some um, office supplies. Let's start by looking at Van Gogh's irises. The iris blooms themselves are a repeated shape with variety throughout the painting, and they are arranged in groups. There is a single white iris as a focal point, and the leaves are these sharp outline shapes in a soft mint green with these very distinct outlines. Well, we're not going to do all that today, but we are going to use the design elements of shape, repeated with variety, and these soft mint leaves to recede. So let's look at our photograph. This is a close-up of the photo I used for the full sheet, and we're going to use uh, as our center of interest this single flower, which is a group of these shapes, and the center of interest will be this sharp white um, top of this combed flower. So I want to try and get as much rotation in these uh, and shape to these single um, florets or whatever you call them, these lupines, these individual flowers in this uh, entire bloom. And then we have these soft, minty, nondescript um, leaves in the background. I often paint from a uh, iPad because you can manipulate the photo and blow up or add grids. It's very helpful. And I often paint from black and white photos because it's much easier to see the values and um, compare it to a value um, finder. And then adjust your uh, colors. You're free to pick whatever colors you want as long as the value is right. And so um, it's time to look at a value study. And I often do value studies by using tissue paper. Tissue paper over the photo or image. And this is what the um, value study looks like close up. And here's what it looks like. Just a simple piece of tissue paper, small. And I have blocked in the 
um, shape of the paper, go with a vertical um, arrangement or orientation on this painting, and we will see that there is a center of interest of white and that there are darks following almost a cruciform type shape where your eye follows the whites through the painting and that the corners are less important. I wanted to take a moment to say I paint on a drafting table. So this drafting table is at an angle. So if you see shelf liner here in the corner holding brushes, um, these shelf liners that are kind of rubberized that uh, grab uh, the table also grab your brushes and keep them from sliding off. This image uh, has a Duralar over it. If you've ever tried Duralar, you can buy it by the sheet and sheet and pads. And it's a uh, plastical kind of paper that uh, uh, sheet that you can draw on. And um, it's useful in a number of ways. I just wanted to mention that you can check the armature of your uh, paintings. It would, um, of course, these type of grids would uh, change between the size of paintings that you would use. So you might be interested in doing a Duralar of a quarter sheet or whatever uh, size painting that you paint frequently. And I did one for this size uh, sheet for a demonstration to illustrate that most of the activity does seem to fall in the center diamond and then follows down to a focal point here as well as our original plan focal point getting pretty close to um, that uh, this is the most common uh, point in um, Western paintings is this upper uh, left quadrant. I think it has something to do with, the, with that we read from left to right. And I've also allowed some entry uh, of the eye from the bottom of the painting to get up and move around with these whites. So now let's talk about paints because we've got our drawing, we have it masked. Now it's time to start talk to select paint and brushes. I did a sample sheet of the paints that I've selected for this um, painting. Some that can get to very dark values, some that are beautiful but get stuck at mid values, and a selection of um, colors that will help us shift these colors uh, from cool to warm or uh, modify them in a way to, um, to get the color that we need. For example, here is a Prussian blue, which is a very cool blue, but if you add rose, uh, it will go move very quickly to a warm blue and then into the purples. I've also uh, run this blending line into the Viridian and um, included mixes with mint julep, which is an American Journey paint, and leaf green. And uh, mixes with the lemon yellow with cerulean and then all our selected colors with rose. It's really helpful to know what these paints are going to do before you put them on your 300 pound paper. This uh, is Indian Thrum Blue and it can be very dark but it does have a significant color shift so look for the color shift in Indian Thrum. Okay, so those are our color selections. So let's talk about brushes. I'm going to do the underpainting with a small Princeton Neptune brush. This is probably a one inch, very soft, very um, conducive to washes on smaller uh, pieces of paper. I like springy, tough little brushes with pointy ends, things that hold a point. These are the old Lowell Cornells which have since uh, in the market been replaced with these King Arts. I think understand that one company was purchased by the other. I like um, uh, rosemary uh, sable brushes. They're very soft, hold pigments, and come to a very sharp point and are easy to work with. So there are times when I really want a springy, tough little brush, and then others where I want one that 
is um, softer and controls dropping pigment uh, in a different way. I also want to talk about this one a little bit since I've used a lot of masking in this painting, and that is the rosemary. Uh, this is a, not the right one. Here we are. This one. This is the small rosemary eradicator brush. And if you can see, this little tip is not too short, not too long, and not too hard and not too soft for removing lines where you have masked. It's really great for softening lines and edges. Great tool. So I will be uh, using a combination of springy brushes and soft brushes uh, and starting off with a wash, then going to large springy brushes, and then finishing with sables and then the eradicator to uh, refine the edges after the masking is removed. I often draw using a projector. I use a, a very dark pencil most of the time, and for the purposes of this uh, demonstration I used an 8B or a 6B pencil. Um, you can actually buy automatic pencils that uh, come in those dark leads and they're very convenient that you don't have to um, sharpen them. And in this case, I'm looking for the interesting shapes uh, and a lot of detail to help guide me when there's a change in value and the grouping of shapes into larger shapes. Here's our drawing today. And I've actually cut out a shape of the blue bonnet as it would fit in. So let's start with the first wash. I have my value scale out, I have my paper on something where it's not going to skid around on the drawing board, and I have squeezed out some fresh paint. Now I usually do paint from a palette, but every once in a while I like to, especially with doing washes, is use a butcher's tray and mix up the paints. And when I do mix up the paints, I use a less expensive chisel brush, not my good sables or anything I, where I would ruin the point to mix the paint. So let's start with um, cobalt, a nice true blue, and try and cover the sections that are blue. some cerulean for some uh, interest in changing, changing colors. And this background is a mint, very light mint julep, paying attention that you don't get over a uh, value four in this first wash. Blend to make sure that you don't get hard edges. Here's our painting now with the washes dried, and I've actually put in some second washes just to make them a little bit darker and more intense uh, in purples right around this um, center of interest. So the contrast between the darkest dark and the lightest light will <clears throat> help um, guide the eye to our focal point. So let's get started on painting the petals. I'm already have a second version here that I'm starting with putting in some of the darker darks. This isn't as dark as we're going to go, we'll probably go as dark as value nine. But uh, I'm looking at the photo and following the um, organic shapes of, of these petals, working towards trying to build round shapes and a conical value <coughs> changes to facilitate um, showing the shape of this flower.
Now we're winding down on our Texas Blue Bonnet project, and here we are with the mask removed and lots of these very sharp, abrupt edges where the pigment dries right against the masking. So we're going to have to fix it, and um, that's where I was talking about earlier in the video about the eradicator brush, where you take a damp eradicator brush and work those edges to soften them. Keep working with your brush, just a damp brush, to move the paint that's already on the painting into the, um, the space that's blank, to have some softer edges and shaping, painting with a very excess pigment surrounding there to, get, to improve the shapes and soften those edges. Keep working on that. That's part of using masking is that once you remove the masking, you need to work to adjust those edges. It's a good tool and saves time, but there's time on the back end. Well, as we continue to work on those edges, which you can see will take a while, I have worked on uh, this one where I have softened these edges um, more and more complete on the project of softening the edges. So you can see that there uh, are more um, shapes and curvature and less bright whites underneath the plant and more bright whites directionally from the light where you would expect to see true whites. I've also used a half inch or three-quarter inch brush with a um, slurry of white gouache mixed with some uh, leaf green to um, soften the background a bit. This, uh, I thought it was too sharp, too dull, and I needed to lighten it in, er in areas. And you're permitted to use white paint when you want to as a glaze or, or however you want to, really. There are only a few societies that don't permit the uh, admission of white paint, and if it works in what you're doing, and in this case it lightens the background, makes it matte, and pushes it further back. Um, so I have used a white glaze here in the background. It kind of looks like this. I've also added some darker marks to anchor these uh, plants down to the earth. I also have a handy tool that Cheap Girls has um, these gems that are plastic uh, frames so that you get a better idea of what your painting will look like when it's framed in light framing. So, um, that's a suggestion is to um, have a frame where you can help you visualize what your uh, finished painting might look like. I keep a full-size mat, backboard, and acrylic sheet on my easel so that I can see what uh, the painting will look like framed. And so this is the final painting. It's a commission, the Texas Blue Bonnets. And Let's get some close-ups here, so you can see a little more of that detail. This was the area that we did in the demonstration. And some of the negative painting in the background. Again, I did do a gouache type wash over the green in the background to soften it. And I softened all those edges that were masked with a eradicator brush and let's see and went back in and made sure I got some of those really super dark values well this will conclude my demonstration and thank you for watching